Hey guys, it's me Saran, back with another video. Today's video is one that was actually um, highly, highly requested. Uh, Memphis Minnie, she's been requested for a while, like even before February rolled around. So I wanted to make sure that I did her um, for Black History Month. Lizzie Douglas, born June 3rd, 1897, died August 9th, 1973, known as Memphis Minnie, was a blues guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter whose recording career lasted from the 1920s to the 1950s. She recorded around 200 songs, some of the best known being Bumblebee, Nothing in Rambling, and Me and My Chauffeur Blues. Memphis Minnie has been described as the most popular female country blues singer of all time, and she was an influence on later singers such as Big Mama Thornton, Joanne Kelly, and Aaron Harp. She was inducted into the Blues Foundation's Hall of Fame in 1980. Me and My Chauffeur Blues was recorded by Jefferson Airplane on their debut album, Jefferson Airplane Takes Off, and the 1929 Memphis Minnie and Kansas Joe McCoy song, When the Levee Breaks, was adapted by Led Zeppelin and released in 1971 on their fourth album. Her song, I'm Sailin', was also covered by Mazzy Starr on their 1990 debut album, She Hangs Brightly. So this is someone that's really had a huge, huge, huge influence on rock and roll as a genre. Douglas was born on June 3, 1897 in Algiers, Louisiana. She was the eldest of 13 siblings. Her parents, Abe and Gertrude Douglas, nicknamed her kid when she was young, and her family called her that throughout her childhood. It is reported that she disliked the name Lizzie, and when she first began performing, she played under the name Kid Douglas. When she was seven, she and her family moved to Walls, Mississippi, south of Memphis, and the following year, she received her first guitar as a Christmas present. She learned to play the banjo by the age of 10 and the guitar by the age of 11 when she started playing at parties. The family later moved to Brunswick, Tennessee, and in 1910, at the age of 13, she ran away from home to play music on Beale Street in Memphis. She performed on street corners for most of her teenage years, occasionally returning to her family's farm when she ran out of money, and her sidewalk performances led to a tour of the South with the Ringling Brothers Circus from 1916 to 1920. She then went back to Beale Street with its thriving blues scene and made her living by playing guitar and singing. She began performing with Joe McCoy, a Delta blues musician that she would later marry, in 1929. They were discovered by a talent scout for Columbia Records in front of a barber shop where they were playing for dimes, and she and McCoy went on to record in New York City, given the names Kansas Joe and Memphis Minnie by a Columbia A&R man. Over the next few years, she and McCoy released a series of records performing as a duet, and in February 1930, they recorded the song Bumblebee, which became one of Minnie's most popular songs. She eventually recorded five versions of it. Minnie and McCoy continued to record together until September 1934, before divorcing in 1935. And it's also been reported that her professional career success was a huge part of their divorce, that Joe McCoy basically just couldn't take it. By 1935, Minnie was established in Chicago and beca had become one of a group of musicians who worked regularly for the record producer and talent scout Lester M Melrose. Back on her own after her divorce from McCoy, Minnie began to experiment with different styles and sounds. She recorded four sides for Bluebird Records in July 1934, returned to the Vocalion label in August, and then recorded another session for Bluebird in October, this time accompanied by Casey Bill Weldon. By the end of the 1930s, in addition to her own output for Vocalion, she had recorded nearly 20 sides for Decca and eight sides for Bluebird. She also toured extensively in the 1930s, mainly in the South. In 1938, Minnie married the guitarist and singer Ernest Lawlers, known as Little Son Joe, and they began recording together in 1939, with Son adding a more rhythmic backing to Minnie's guitar. They recorded for OK Records, I think it's pronounced OK, or OKA, it's spelled O-K-E-H, uh, in the 1940s, and continued to record together through the decade. By 1941, Minnie had started playing electric guitar, and in May of that year, she recorded her biggest hit, Me and My Chauffeur Blues. A follow-up date 
produced two more blue standards, Looking the World Over and Black Rat Swing. In the 1940s, Minnie and Lawlers continued to work at their home club, Chicago's popular 708 Club, and also played at many of the other better-known Chicago nightclubs. Minnie also often played on her own throughout Chicago, and the poet Langston Hughes, upon seeing her perform on New Year's Eve 1942, wrote of her hard and strong voice. Minnie continued to record into the 1950s until her health began to decline. With public interest in blues music waning, she retired from her musical career, and in 1957, she and Lawlers returned to Memphis. Periodically, she appeared on Memphis radio stations to encourage young blues musicians, and she suffered a stroke in 1960, which left her confined to a wheelchair. Lawlers died the following year, and Minnie had another stroke a short while after, she spent her last years in the jail nursing home in Memphis, Tennessee, where she died of a stroke in 1973. She's buried at the New Hope Baptist Church Cemetery excuse me, in Mississippi, and for years her grave was unmarked until a headstone paid for by Bonnie Raitt was erected on October 13, 1996. Her headstone is inscribed, Lizzie Kid Douglas Lawlers, a.k.a. Memphis Minnie. The hundreds of sides many recorded are the perfect material to teach us about the blues. For the blues are at once general and particular, speaking for millions, but in a highly singular, individual voice. Listening to many songs, we hear her fantasies, her dreams, her desires, but we will hear them as if they were our own. Memphis Minnie. A hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. See you next time. Of course there will be really interesting links in the description box including uh, quite a few YouTube videos if you guys want to watch some of her performances. Peace!